Yes, it is finally here. So in Notion, you will have seen today, we have the timeline view, which is essentially the Gantt chart view. And then we have lots of other things that they've added in that we've been wanting for a while. So make sure you stick around to see all of the things that they've added in with this update. But let's have a look at the timeline view and what it can do. Okay, so diving straight into Notion, I'm just on a blank page and I'm going to add in a database just as I normally would. But now in the add view option, you can see we have timeline view because that is the new view that we have access to. And this is applicable to every database. So even the databases you've currently got, you can just go straight to the timeline view. Now, when you normally add in a database, you get those three default properties, three default pages even, and they are here. It's just they don't have a date on them yet, so that's why they're, they're coming up as this, this gray looking box. This page down the bottom, this is your new page add, so you can see all four of those in the Gantt chart view, and as you go down, each row is a page, exactly the same as all of the other views. Now, we are currently in the small view, but the timeline goes all the way to the side. Now, I am going to make it full width, just to show you the difference, so all it's done is it's moved the title across. Now. I am currently in the monthly view you can see up here and we have lots of different views. So I'm going to go to the hour view and what that's done is it's changed the view at the top to every half an hour. When I add a page in in the hours view, so let's add one in, you can see we've now got that page in there. It's different from using the cross. If I go into the page, you can see it's added in this page from 10.45 to 11.45. Now that was me just pushing into the page. If I was to click and drag this across, you can then make it longer and make it shorter. But when you just add the page in, it's going to give you an hour here, 10.45 to 11.45, if you're in the hour view. So let's remove that for a second. And now when we go into the day view, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just going to click. Now I'm gonna go into the page. I will put this as day so we know what it was doing. So you can see it's 10.45 to 1.45. So what it's done is it's added a date in there, but it's for three hours. So you have a three hour page slot, essentially in your timeline view, if you're in the day view. Then we go to the week view, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to add a new page, put week, and you can see, oops, week. And you can see it's added in the date but it's just the day. So if you're in the week view and you add a page in, the default time span will be one day. Now moving to the bi-weekly view, you can see we've now got two weeks in this view. I'm going to add a new page. I'm gonna go bi-weekly, go into the page, and you can see bi-weekly adds in essentially three days. So you've got fifth to the seventh. So it gives you a start date, start day, and an end date or end day. Now we move into the month, we do the same thing. So when we go into the month, you can see we've now got the 5th to the 9th. So it's added a couple more days on with the month view. We can then have a look at the quarter. And the quarter goes from the 5th to the 18th. So that's 13 days. That's almost a two week time span that it's put in. And then when we go into the year, it goes from the 4th of November to the 1st of December. So that's almost a whole month added in for the time span if you're in the year overview. Now, because this is a database, everything else that you could normally do in a database is available. So you can add properties, take away properties, use templates, filters, sorts, all the templates you currently have will work. The timeline view, however, you have timeline by, which is the same as the calendar, but it also lets you choose the start date and the end date. So here we have the date property and the date property as our start and end date, but, if we were to go into our database, we add another date property. So let's add another date property and go backwards a little bit for this one. So you can see we've got property and date. And now when we come into timeline by, you can see property as an end date or as a start date. So I'm going to change property as the start date. Now you can see we've got the error coming up for these pages but we have this page has now got a different start date to the end date showing in this timeline view. This means that you could use different date properties. You can still use a formula property. You can use different date properties to show this, this view, this span, however you want to do it. You're still limited to the start and the end, but this is really, really nice and can be really useful when you think formulas, you can add in an automatic review date or an end date or something, and that can be your span. Now, moving into this week view, you can see we've got 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all at the top. So you could use this as a weekly agenda. And when we move over to this table view, you can actually see the, the three arrows, the, the two arrows, and you can hide the table. So you don't have to show all of this information. So I'm going to hide the table for a second. And this next feature is something that's been added on all of the databases. So when we come into properties, you can see plus 50 pages. Now we can now choose 10 pages, 25 pages, 50, 100, and all pages. And this is applicable on every database view. So that's the table, the list, the board, the calendar, and the gallery view. So we can pick how many pages we want to see. So we could filter our database and it may show 23 pages, but we only want to see the top 10 filtered for the sort. So we can select 10 pages, 25 pages, etc. Now, when we go further into this timeline view specifically, you can see show table, and that's the table over here that we hid a second ago. So if I show that again, we now can see all of the properties. So we can see the properties twice in this timeline view. So if we show the date, the property and the tags, you can see it's now got this table view that we can shrink. So we can shrink them just like a table or we could hide them again. We can do what we want with them. So essentially this timeline view is a table with a timeline view. And again, we can show those properties on the actual pages, but the only downside of this is if it's longer than the actual page, you can see over here, it spreads out over sort of overflows from the page, which aesthetically doesn't look great, especially when you carry on adding things in. So if we were to add a tag onto this page, let's put something in there. You can see it's now all the way out here, which isn't great, but what you can then do is you don't need to have them on the page. You could have them hidden over here for the tagging, but again, that's personal preference and how you want to work with it. Now this next feature is not timeline specific. This added feature has been something that we've all wanted for so long and it is the ability to hide properties. So when we go into any of the properties of this specific database, you can then see customize page and this is an added option. No matter what property you click on, no matter what view you're in, you can click on customize page. And what this allows you to do is you can select the backlinks and the comments which are just at the bottom of the page. You could show them in a pop-up, you can have them expanded, or you can turn them off. Now, those of you that have watched my channel for a while, I'm not a fan of the backlinks, so I have these completely turned off because I don't use them anywhere. But you can have them expanded if you want them always expanded, or you can have them in a pop-up, which is what it's currently looking like. You can do the same with the comments, so you could turn the comments off if you're not working in a team, if you're working by yourself, you can just turn those comments off. And then the big thing, you can hide properties. Now you can't hide the name property in the table database, that is still showing, but this is hiding the properties when you open up that page. So you could have them always show, so they are always going to show irrespective of what page you're going to. You can have them hide when empty. So if there is nothing in the property, then it won't show, but it will show if there's something in it. And then you have always hide. So always hide is just always going to hide the property and you're not going to see it. So if we change this one to always hide, you can see the tags property has now been hidden. And when we go into the page, you can see we've got show more, one more page. And this will add up. So if we were to hide another property, so we always hide this one as well, you can see show two more properties. And this will sum up all the way down. So when you go into the page, it will only show you the ones that are necessary to be shown. You can click on that drop down and then see all of those properties, which is absolutely amazing. Now, when you click off the page and you go back into the page, there they are, they're all hidden, you don't have to see them all. And if we come back into this little menu here, what I will do is I will turn this off and I will turn this off. And now this is very, very clean looking at this database page. So this is one of those features that I'm so glad they added. But if you're interested to learn more about how I use Notion and how I use some of these added features in my workflow, make sure you check out this video over here and I'll see you there.